Hi everyone and welcome to another video. For this video let's take a look at this Lenovo ThinkCenter M91P that I have here. During the video I will completely disassemble and reassemble the device and as I usually do here on my channel I'll also perform some upgrades while doing so. As you can see I have the tower version of the M91P here. It was also available in the more compact small and ultra small form factor versions. I actually used the SFF version of this PC to build a NAS some time back. I'll put a card here in case you want to take a look at the related video. The Lenovo M91P dates back to somewhere mid 2011 and was clearly targeted towards business users. Nothing too fancy here. Nevertheless, even today, with the RAM upgrade and an SSD, it's not a huge punishment using it. I will even try to put in a more or less time accurate video card, an AMD Radeon HD 7770, and let's see if we can still do some gaming on this otherwise pretty boring machine. Let's first have a look on what we are dealing with here. On the front side we have the power button and LEDs for hard disk activity and power, the DVD drive behind the bezel, two front USB ports and front audio. On the back we can see the power connector, serial port, VGA, display port, six more USB ports, network and audio. Time to open up the case and take a look inside. The build quality feels excellent by the way. As for example you can also notice by the opening mechanism. Inside we can see the power supply, DVD drive, hard disk, CPU and cooler and a memory. Let's start our disassembly by removing the power cables and the SATA cables from the drives. Now that is disconnected, we can get the hard disk out. The disk is in a cage with a turning mechanism that should give easy access to it. As you can see, the hard disk is fixed to the bottom of that cage. Let's get it out by removing the four screws that hold it in place. There it is, a 1TB drive. That definitely was upgraded before. Now that we have better access, let's remove the P4 and ATX power connector. Now we can disconnect the smaller case related connectors. Like front audio, the speaker, front USB, power button and LEDs and temperature sensor. Last things connected to the motherboard are the case fan and intrusion detection sensor. Well, just a button that checks if the case is closed. Before getting the motherboard out, let's also remove the DVD drive. Before we can do so, we need to remove the front panel completely. Then we can just slide it out. As you can see it has a clip on the side that allows to install and remove it without using any tools. Finally we can unscrew the motherboard from the case. It's held in place with 8 screws which had a weird sized Philips head so it took me some fiddling to get them all out. But eventually we can get the board out of the case. Not much left, let's get the memory out first. Then we can finally remove the CPU fan. And we get to see the Core i5 that is in the system. 
The remaining thermal paste is clearly beyond its lifetime, so let's get rid of that. Same for the other side on the CPU cooler. After opening the CPU socket, we can have a good look at the heart of this PC, an Intel Core i5-2500. This Intel CPU is of the second generation Core i5 and runs at 3.3 GHz with a turbo frequency of 3.7. It has 6 MB of smart cache. You might not say it as it's far from new, but performance wise this is still a comfortable CPU to work with today. Let's have a closer look at the motherboard as well while it's out. We have the CPU socket, 4 memory slots with 2 channels, blue goes first, then green. 1 PCIe X16 and 1 X1 slot and 2 regular PCI slots. 4 SATA ports, 2 case fan connectors and CPU fan. We also have a header for a parallel port, front panel connector, 2 USB headers, second serial port, front audio and PC speaker. Here we have a nice overview of all the components. 4 times 4 GB that will replace the 2 GB modules that were originally there, the video card, hard disk, SSD, DVD drive, CPU and cooler, and the motherboard. About that video card, I will add an AMD Radeon HD 7770 to this machine. That would be pretty time accurate for a nice gaming upgrade. The card has 1 GB of GDDR5 video memory, DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. Back to our M91P and let's start with the reassembly. Let's open the socket and insert the CPU. As always, pay attention to the orientation. Let's put some much needed fresh thermal paste and we can put back the CPU cooler. Next up is the memory. We have 4 modules so we can just populate all DIMM slots. No need to worry about which slot to populate first to get maximum dual channel performance. Four times four gigabyte for a total of 16 gigabyte. Not much work we can do more on the board itself, so let me fix it back to the case. Then we first need to put back the annoying but needed smaller connectors, starting with front audio. And ending with a thermal sensor. Then the power connectors, the small P4. And big ATX connector. Followed by the intrusion detector and case fan. Time for the drives, starting with the SATA connectors. We have the DVD drive, hard disk and SSD to connect, so three cables. The DVD drive can be put back. then connect it to power and the other end to the SATA cable. There isn't really a place in the case for the SSD, but I plan to put the hard disk in its cage and the remaining space is a perfect match for the 2.5 inch SSD. Not as good as a bracket, but definitely cheaper. Let me fix the hard disk first.
and put the cage back in the case. Then we can connect it to power. And insert our SSD. Finally, the same for the SATA cables. Last one to go in the case is the video card. Let's remove some of these covers to make room for it. And then we can insert it in the PCIe X16 slot. As you can see, the video card needs additional power as it takes more power than the PCIe slot can deliver. As the power supply doesn't have this 6-pin PCIe connector, I'll use a cable like this one to supply the needed power from the power supply to the video card. All components are in their place, so let me put the front panel back. And close up the case. Here we have it, the moment of truth. Let's boot up the PC. Bit funny to see this message as we definitely increase the memory rather than decreasing. Like we already could see before entering the BIOS setup, we see our CPU and a 16GB of memory which I installed. The SSD is empty, so nothing to boot from. To fix this, let me quickly install Windows 10. Almost there, only some updates left. One thing I did install myself was the latest drivers for the video card, as I know that the driver from Windows Update usually isn't the best. Let's do some basic benchmarks now. Starting with AGA for disk performance. Those are really nice speeds for a SATA SSD, especially since it was really cheap. For completeness, I will also test a 1TB hard disk. Next up is Geekbench 5, starting with the CPU benchmark. That's a pretty decent result for such an old CPU. Especially if you compare this to some of the much newer CPUs I tested over the last months. Now let's see how that video card is doing. Nothing shocking here, but still very usable for a bit older games today. Speaking of which, let's see how the performance is for this upgraded PC in real life games. 
I'm starting with Need for Speed Most Wanted. This got released in the end of 2012, so pretty time accurate for this machine and video card. Around 30 to 45 frames per second as you can see. I got the resolution on Full HD and most details set to high. Very playable as you can see during this race. The frame rate is high enough and doesn't really drop. Perfect for winning races. Next up I have Far Cry 4. This was released about 2 years later, so probably Far Cry 3 would have been a better match. Full HD resolution and quality on medium gives us around 30 FPS. No real luxury here, but still playable. Lowering the resolution a bit would make this definitely better. Last one of the games is GTA 5. Shouldn't be a secret by now that I really like this game. Here we can clearly see that the 1GB of video memory is a limiting factor for this game. As soon as I try to put it on a higher resolution, we go over the threshold. Same for quality, only thing we can get is normal. Anything better leads again to too high memory usage. Other than that, the game runs very fluent as you can see. Somewhere between a minimum of 80 FPS and a lot of times over 100. On these settings, the game runs really well, despite the lack of video memory. That was it for the Lenovo Think Center M91P. Hope you liked this video, and if you did, please put a thumbs up. If you like this kind of videos, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel for more of the same. Thanks again, and I hope to see you back here soon.